Hello again, everyone. Welcome to Washington Gun Law TV. I am Washington Gun Law President William Kirk. Thanks for joining us. Hey, listen, I know a lot of you have suddenly been spending more and more times at FFLs for various reasons, and it's a good time and a good opportunity for us to have a discussion about how to be that lawful and responsible gun owner while you're at the FFL, just like we want you to be everywhere else. So today we're going to have our good friends here at Three Aces in Spokane, Washington, help us out. So let's spend a few minutes today and talk about how not to be that guy in the gun store. Okay, so like I said, the issue we're talking about today is how not to be that guy in the gun store. And I have with me Aaron Smith of Three Aces here in Spokane. Aaron, say hi to everyone. How you guys doing? Why don't you tell everybody a little bit about Three Aces LLC here? Well, we started in our retail location in November of 2018. And uh, obviously we're still here, kind of, because of new current laws, but we're working on it. And we're trying to keep you in business because yeah. we know that there's an attorney general and a governor who may not be a big fan of your business. Aaron, we're going to be talking today. we got a lot of new gun owners in the state of Washington. we got a lot of people who are out panic buying right now, a little emotional why they're buying too. Yeah. And I really want everyone to understand that part of being the lawful and responsible gun owner also entails how you behave when you're inside a gun store. So today what we've done is we've gone through and we kind of picked out a bunch of lists, some of your pet peeves, things that yeah. you see all the time here. Yeah. And we're just gonna kind of go through them because we want all of you to learn from other people's mistakes so that you don't make them and everybody in this industry remains safe. So what is the number one, we got a list right here. What is your number one pet peeve? Loaded guns. Oh, the loaded gun guy. This is how that sometimes looks. Hey, how you doing there, sir? Good, hey, I had a really quick Whoa. question. Let it, let it go. It, it was just a yeah. question about the gun. Loaded? It, it was. Oh. Okay, so listen, if someone's coming into the store and they're carrying a firearm, what is what is it you like to see and what is it you don't like to see as someone working in here? Uh, just from being behind the counter, if you are carrying a gun responsibly and you, uh, you know, you got your permit and do all that, we appreciate that um, and we encourage that. Um, when you come in here and you point your gun at us, um, it's obviously unsafe and it's a little unnerving for us as well as I'm sure you can imagine. Uh, we love to see people carrying uh, and leave your gun in your holster until the time arises. Yeah, and just to give you an idea of how prevalent this problem is, we have a little exhibit here. What's What do we got here? This is a Obviously, it's a bag of various types of ammunition. Yeah. Where did all of this come from? Uh, from people's guns. They they uh, said, oh, my gun's not loaded, and then I'll clear it like a responsible gun owner should, and uh, one pops out, and this is just a small amount of accumulated ammo that we have. How much time frame did it take you to accumulate that ammo here in the gun store? Oh, with, with I would say a couple months. Wow. Maybe. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right, now listen, in addition to the loaded gun guy, which is a big, big no-no, what are some of the other pet peeves you like, or you see around here? Breaking all the firearm safety rules. Ooh, breaking all the firearm safety rule. That might look a little something like this. Hey, how you doing there, bud? Good, how are you? Good, how can I help you? Can I check out that Glock 19, the Gen 5? Gen 5, uh, I got a Gen 3. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, there you go, perfect. Whoa. Yeah. Oh, hey, 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 there's, there's people there, but Oh, sorry. You know, if you're going to try the trigger, go up, go up high. It's a nice gun. Yeah. Okay, Aaron, listen, we were just talking about loaded firearms in, a, in this gun store and how dangerous that is. And obviously, we're talking about the universal rules of firearm safety, yeah. something that I know FFLs are really, really picky about. Let's just get our viewers' memories refreshed. What are the four universal rules of firearm safety? Yeah, treat all weapons as if they're loaded. Uh, finger not on the trigger or in the trigger guard um, and then uh, never point your muzzle at anything you're not willing to destroy and then also to know your target and what's beyond your target okay and so that's a good segue for one of the other things I know this is a real pet peeve I've heard this from other yeah. FFLs and uh, what is that that's the you come on your sites and it's called we call it the point the gun guy. Point the gun guy. Okay, we've just been talking about the universal rules of firearm safety. You don't want to be the point the gun guy. This is what that looks like. There you go. Perfect. Thank you. Oh, hey, bud. There's people over oh. there. Go, go. There you go. 
That's good. Okay, so we just got done seeing the way to not do it. Now, if someone is going to come in, and obviously they, you know, they want to check out these guns. These things are expensive. This is expensive equipment, and they may want to dry fire or, or hold it and things like that. What is the correct and proper way to do that with the FFL's permission? What kind of communication should they have with a guy like you before they do that? Yeah, so first thing is asking permission to dry fire. There are certain firearms that you should not dry fire, such as rimfire firearms. Um, the other thing is the pointing gun. That's all well and good, and I understand you want to see the sights. If it's got a dot, you want to see the dot, whatever. Um, but also, there's other people in here shopping as well. So what we tell people to do is to point it up into our, our little corner up there. That way it's up and out of the way, and uh, you're not going to flag anybody. Yeah, and, and candidly, all gun stores basically are going to have a designated area Something, that yeah. every employee has said, if you're going to point and dry fire the firearm, they're always going to be pointed in one exact area. And so you should really you know, check with the FFL and find out what is appropriate for that particular location. Agree? Yep. yep. Okay, let's talk about, this This is one I was not aware of. I mm -hmm. was not aware of, and we got a good little name for it. What's this guy called? Cylinder Slapper The guy. Cylinder Slapper Guy. This is what that looks like. There you go, sir. Oh, yeah. Oh, don't do that. No? No, you can ruin the gun. Oh. Okay, listen, I, I'm not that familiar with revolvers. I'm mm -hmm. kind of more of a semi-automatic guy, but what's the problem here other than they look a little douchey, but what's the other problem with the cylinder slapper guy? So on the the revolvers is what we're talking about. The cylinders, when you pop them out, if you slap it in, it can ruin the timing between each chamber of that cylinder itself to the barrel. Okay, so even though it looks kind of cool in old cowboy movies... That's not the way we responsibly handle a type of firearm, especially Correct. one that doesn't yeah. belong to us yet. Correct, right? yes. Okay, if they want to destroy their own firearms, that's one thing. If they want to destroy yeah. your inventory, that's probably a bit of a problem, right? Yes, yes. Okay, um, this is one I didn't realize it happened until I started talking to you and some other FFL guys, but um, it's the bargain hunter, or what you like to call the... <laughs> discount member. The discount member guy. This is what that looks like. All right, we good? Yeah, hey, I'm buying all this Arrow stuff. Uh, can I get a discount? Is this your first time in the shop? Uh, I think I've been here before, I, I, you know. So i got to be honest with you, we don't do frequent flyer miles, and we also don't do first-time discounts. Instead, you get to leave with a whole bunch of excellent Arrow parts and pay full price. Okay, go ahead and ring me up. Okay, now listen, I think everyone likes a good bargain. Absolutely. Okay, we all we like all a do. good bargain, but... I think, I think there's a couple of realities about the FFL industry that a lot of people don't realize. Number one is there is no single FFL on the planet that's operating on high markups. No. Can't, can't be done. You can't. Yeah. Right? And so you guys are running on razor thin margins. And so when you're offering something at 5%, 10% off, you're cutting into a, a profit margin that barely exists to begin with. Yeah, right? it's almost half. Okay. All right. And so then when you get Mr. Bargain Hunter guy <laughs> that wants to come in and you know, barter with you like we're at the, you know, the Wednesday farmer's market or something. Yeah. What, what's the problem for you, not only on a professional level, but from an industry-wide level? Well, like we just said, it cuts into the, the amount that we do actually make, which is, as we said, very little. Right. And this is a for-profit business. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So I'm assuming that if you guys have the ability to mark items down, you absolutely. will do so. You will advertise those sales. And that's yeah. obviously sometimes... The manufacturer or the rep will help you with that more Correct. than you actually eating the cost, right? Yeah, usually, and I'll use Aero Precision as an yeah, example. Great, great company. Great, yeah. They do what's called a map break. So we can't advertise lower than what they allow us to, but we'll do like map break holidays and then we can sell it lower than what they say that we can advertise. It. But they're basically allowing you to do that. So you're getting help Correct. from the manufacturer yeah. itself without... Without the assistance of the manufacturer, you guys just simply can't do it and, Correct. and yeah. stay in business. Correct. Okay. Let's talk about um, let's talk about something else that is a big issue. Uh, our attorney general seems to think that this is all you guys do, which is uh, profit from straw purchases. But right. what do we call this person that comes in? The not a straw purchaser. The guy. not a straw purchaser guy. This okay. is kind of what that looks like. Hey, how you doing there, sir? Hey, really good. I was saying earlier today, and yeah, I'm. I want to buy that shotgun for my neighbor. Oh, okay. Um, can your neighbor come do the paperwork on it? Well, I don't know. I mean, he's a law-abiding person. I'm just going to buy it for a present for him. And yeah, I mean, he has to do the background check on it. 
because uh, we got to make sure that he can pass a background check. Well, he's sense. a vet and yeah. a decorated vet and all cool. that. Well, stuff, we appreciate so. that, but he'll have no issues passing background check then. Okay, so you know the example we showed, it seemed pretty innocuous. I mean, he looked like a reputable guy. He seemed like he was buying for a reputable guy. The yeah. big problem for you and everybody in your industry is they don't know, right? And you cannot do it, can no, you? No, it's not allowed. Okay, and so. What you need to understand is that if at any point, these FFLs do not operate in a vacuum. If you hear a conversation going on in the store right. where you suddenly have reason to believe that this could be a straw purchase, what are you going to do as a retailer? Deny the sale. Right. Just like if someone comes in and they're reeking like booze yeah. or reeking like weed, Marijuana, yeah. right? They may clear the background check, but you as an FFL... In good faith, I can't turn it over. Right, right. And so, and I want a lot of you guys out there to understand this is that there is an attack on the FFL industry and our attorney general will make it seem as though every one of these FFLs is nothing but a rogue retail operation. The truth of the matter is, is that the FFLs are often the last line of defense to keeping firearms out of people who should, the hands of people who shouldn't have them. Yeah. I've seen many, many stories where you guys have not just you, but other people in the industry have denied a sale to someone where the federal and state paperwork was all good. Yeah. But there was another reason for which you just didn't feel comfortable making yeah, the sale. Absolutely. Okay. Now, the final guy I want to talk about. Okay. And this is this is what I've seen this one myself. What do we call this person? The know it all guy. Oh, the know it all guy. This is what that looks like. Hey, how you doing there, sir? Good, good. Hey, uh, oh man, this is exactly what I was looking for. You wanna take a look at it? Yeah, I do, please. Yeah. yeah. This is this is literally the same exact gun that I used when I was in the military. Oh yeah? What branch are you? I was an Army MP in the Marine Corps. Man, that is a beaut. Um, you, got any, you got any clips for this? Uh, I have magazines. No, no, I don't want any of those pussy ass Turk Ferguson 10 round things. I want the bazooka version, like 81 rounds or whatever they come with. Uh, we can only do 10. Okay, now listen, I get some of you know an awful lot about firearms, and I will certainly uh, believe that some of you probably know a lot more about firearms than me. However, what is your job? My job is to know everything that I sell. If I, if I don't know the details of, about what I'm selling, I shouldn't be selling. It. Right, and not only the details about what you're selling, but the legality of what yeah. you're selling. Because in our example, we were about to throw a shoulder stock onto uh, okay. a firearm yeah. with a barrel less than 16 inches. Yep. The the customer had no clue what they were doing. You did because... It's my job. It's his job. That's right. So listen, I get that a lot of you know an awful lot about firearms, okay? The likelihood that you are going to know more than your FFL is highly unlikely. I'm not saying that you don't know more than we do, but it's kind of my job. Hey, I want to thank Ed, Rob, and Aaron, and everybody at Three Aces for helping us out. You may have more questions about proper gun store etiquette or anything else related to what's left of our Second Amendment rights, and you should know by now how to contact us, but all of our contact information is down in the box below. In the meantime, everyone needs to remember that part of being the lawful and responsible gun owner, like we talk about all the time here at Washington Gun Law, is to know what the law is in every situation and how it applies to you in any instance that you may find yourself. Until next time, thanks for watching. Stay safe.